Hi, my name is Ikel O'Hara, and this is Ikelo Photo. And I've got my friend Travis here, and he is going to learn a little bit about DaVinci Resolve today. So I hope that you enjoy this episode of Ikelo Photo. All right. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm down here in the corner. I know I'm doing we're, what we're doing today is a little live stream with my very good friend, Travis Hicks. He is going to be kind of peeking in on my world of making YouTube content. And he's going to help me with a couple of behind the scenes things that I've been really needing for some of my B-roll and stuff like that. But before we do that, I wanted to show him some of my process of what I do and how I kind of create videos. And so what I'm going to do right now is show him two programs. One is called DaVinci Resolve. Everybody knows that I use that all the time. And it is a program that actually is free. It's free and free fully functional, and does everything you want it to, it, it up and including some of the most like high-end sort of cleaning up of footage that you would want in a, in a free product. But if you wanted to, you could upgrade to the $300, only time you're ever going to pay $300 license, <laughs> and you will not have to worry about having a subscription program or anything like that with DaVinci. The second program we're going to take a quick peek at is called Notion. And Notion is a productivity program that I use to organize my YouTube content so that I have this Ikello photo like content tree. And I'm going to show him a little of both of those. So first, let us look at DaVinci. Hi, Travis. How you doing? Amazing. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're looking at, you'll see right here on the left-hand side of your screen, right? You see that this is, this is DaVinci Resolve right over here. It's the media section where you acquire your media. Now, when you personally get DaVinci, it's going to be pretty cool because it's going to be on your iPad. And what you're going to do is you're going to be living in this page. This page right here. Let me, let me minimize that other notion for a second. Look at that happy fellow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <that happy> fellow. <laughs> Actually, this isn't notion over here. This is a, uh, Descript, but it's a it's a different photo editing. I mean, video editing program, but it helps me get uh, uh, things like my um, my captions for all of my videos that I've started putting on all of my videos. Uh, I get those through that program. Anyway, uh, back to the left side of the screen. This is the timeline I use for my exposure video, and as you can see, Travis. It's got multiple layers and multiple things and things on top of stuff and blurred out stuff and text and B-roll and floating things and stuff on top of things. You know what I'm saying. So uh, I don't know if you know this, Travis, but uh, there's this thing called a nonlinear editor. So back in the day, you used to have to cut film up and you'd have all these things laid out and you'd have to have them all like with strips of like um, uh, tape and you tape all these strips of actual film in rows and rows and rows so that you had everything lined up. And that was in a linear way so that you could cut from thing to thing to thing. Well, in the digital age, we decided that we didn't need to be constrained by those petty things called called time and space we want to earn, uh, we want to be able to edit in any way we want so what did we decide to do we went nonlinear meaning that we can jump from any place to any place on this timeline now i use something called a speed editor 
And this, uh, you may not be able to see it down in the little screen, but see, Travis? Yeah, I see it. That's a speed editor. If at some point we get you up to speed, we'll get you one of these things. And boy, I, and I told you, it's a, it's like a little keyboard that all it does is spin and create things move because I'm moving things around. See that? Oh, that's the keyboard you were talking about? Yes, that's wow. the keyboard I'm talking about. It has a click wheel. It has a bunch of buttons so that you can edit really quickly. It's a great little tool. But that tool right now is what I'm using to kind of manipulate it. But you still do need a mouse and a keyboard for certain things. You actually don't need a keyboard for actually anything. You just need a mouse and your speed editor. Uh, with the speed editor, you can do things like... Um, You'll see down in the very bottom here. You'll see down here at the bottom, right? Uh, down here at the bottom uh, is the big timeline, which, and this up here is the small version of this bigger timeline. And you can race down this timeline. You can uh, change a button on your, so I can move this fast by spinning my wheel, or, if I hit a button, uh, the scroll button instead of the jog button, I can move all the way down to the end of the, the piece or all the way back up to the top of the piece. It's really quick. Isn't that crazy? Oh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. And that's with the uh, speed editor. And they work in conjunction with each other, my man. It's really, really slick. Because... <laughs> Working in conjunction with each other, it kind of play, they play off of each other. I get to, if I have multiple cameras that I'm using on a shoot. So say you have a camera for behind the scenes, and I also have a vlogging camera that I'm vlogging with, but you're also shooting. I can take the audio from both of those and sync them up with the speed editor. And they're on, on the speed editor, there are actually little buttons and everything. Actual little buttons and everything right there. All right, hold on just a second. My wife is calling in. Uh, let's see what she has to say. Caller number one. Hey, baby. You are talking very, very loudly. Can you hear her, Travis? <laughs> yes, I can hear her. She's very, very loud. And so the door is open. Oh, so are you mad at me? No. It sounds like it, because I can hear her very, very loud. Can you hear Travis? What? No. Oh, you can't hear Travis. Travis can hear you, but you can't hear Travis. Yeah, and she's very, very loud. Is she very? <laughs> is she loud to you? Yeah, it feels like. Uh, yeah, it feels like she's shouting at you. <laughs> he says it feels like you're shouting at him, and you're not even really talking that loud. Anyway, all right. I love you, baby. I will be a little quieter. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, bye. Hello? Hello. All right, I'm back. I did that through my iPad, actually. That was weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, let me see. We all have to get scolded at some point. You have to use your soft supple voice now mm. all right <laughs> my soft supple voice okay so where was i all right so where we are is this is a non-linear editor it edits different uh it edits footage together in a way that is uh very intuitive once you understand what you're doing so uh Let's go, as you can see, uh, it when you get to one of these spots, you see the red line on the bottom as you move. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yep. one, uh, as, as you get to one of these spots, it kind of sticks at that spot before you cool. get past it again. It's a, It gives you the ability to, like, line a bunch of uh, different things up or get rid of them all at the same time. Poof, like that. As a matter of fact, something, you know what? 
if I had my druthers, I probably, probably should have done this. All right, so uh, editing, uh, editing is very, very easy. It's very easy. It's a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this B roll, that B roll, this picture, and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create a new timeline. I'm going to call it Timeline 2. Okay. Now, I want to show you what you can do. Now, I can take all of this really get rid of it because I really was just trying to create a new timeline so I could give you an example. All right, so we're going to go to our source material. So here's all of my source material. Here's me talking, right? And then here is here's some of my B-roll. So here's, as you, you remember watching the video earlier today, right? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, in each example i was giving different examples i never even got to this picture this is uh the one of our caretakers uh when we were in belize uh, this is uh me doing street photography and here's some b-roll that i got from um uh story blocks what's b-roll b-roll is you know how when you're watching something and someone's talking to you and then they cut away to something else and to give example of what they're talking about? Okay. Well, that right there is B pretty slick. Whoa. I know. And it gives you the ability to hide edits sometimes. So sometimes you want to cut to some B-roll because you had a hiccup or something and you had to do a jump cut, but you don't want to show the jump cut. You put some B-roll on. You think about the context of what you're listening to, and then you find B-roll uh, that fits that context. So well, as you were watching the video, did you ever feel not like you weren't engaged, or were you being were things happening all the time, and so you kind of just kept going with the flow? You know what I mean? Nope, I was so, engaged. Right. So I hope, my my hope, is that as I get better and better and better at this content creation thing, that when my audience finally does really discover me, that I will have kind of gotten it to the point where I'm really good at it and I'm in a groove and I do it really, really well. And you, you will you will be rolling really fast through the editing. <laughs> yeah. And I've been I've had this uh, channel for three years, but I feel like I've really expanded and really learned from uh the experience you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i i'm really excited so this is so that's b-roll right and here's even an asset i picked up from canva i picked up this asset from canva i have a yep. subscription to canva and i can and as you can see here are all of the different assets. Mm -hmm. I used that one specifically when I was talking about light meters. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to use this one. This one right here. So right here. I was going to use it in like reference to how you, he swung up and it got darker, you know, mm -hmm. or exposed. A really good example of exposure, you know, mm -hmm. right there. Boom. And it gets a little darker. You see yeah. So yeah. You can see the clouds. The clouds, you can actually see the blue of the sky peeking through because of the way that the exposure flipped down. And I was going to use this piece and I just did not use it. I never got to it. What was another piece that I, I had to use that. I definitely used that. I remember that. I did not use this. This was one I was thinking of using, but it kind of felt redundant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of the same thing, but not quite, but kind of the same thing as the one yeah. before it. Sort of. 
I actually, uh, if I put it in, there's a button on here where if I hit video only, it will only take the video part of it and then spit it onto the timeline. So oh. let's go back. All right. So as you can see, see, here's the timeline, right? Down here's the timeline. And then here's the smaller version of the timeline up here. Every time you take a piece of media and put it down here, it is added to this little timeline and this big timeline. And as you scroll down, you will see that it they both correspond with each other. The one at the top and the one at the bottom both get to the end at the same time because they are the same clip. Okay? Every time you add something, right? Every time you add something, you can choose to grab it right here by the bars and make it shorter or longer. Okay? That's it. That's yeah. all you really need to know about editing, really, is how oh. to get stuff onto the timeline. Now, you could all you could obviously do something more complicated. <laughs> like putting music under it or uh, making sure you edit, like have voiceover while things are happening over it. You, you could do all of that stuff. You, you could. But the basic concept is that you find a piece of footage that you like and then boom, cut it up, chop, 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 and be done. It's a very simple process. It's not anywhere near as hard as people think it is. But if you want to do it really, really well, it takes a little bit of effort, just a little bit. And uh, I don't feel like I am like the beat all to end all, you know, editor at all. But, you know, I hope at some point that I will be able to like say, I have this style. I want you to do it like that. <laughs> You'll like discover that. your style. Do my style. Do my style, boo. Do the Akello. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I uh, in this little introduction, just a little teeny bit, that's that's all I wanted to show you was you, the, you, you add stuff over here. You literally look for stuff right here. What you do is you go here and then you go into like maybe black magic and let's go into the dog park right and here's some dog park footage i could take some of that right click on it and add it media to the pool right and voila there's all this footage down there wow. and then i can look at each one of those things this is footage from us being at the dog park. I don't even know when we did it. Oh, slow motion. Oh, there's a lot going on on this computer. It's got a kind of glitching. Mm -hmm. Look at those cute dogs. Oh, you see that? Oh, man. That just reminded me of the flight of the navigator. Man. I wish. Oh, oh look at that epic shot of Daisy. <laughs> and scene. You know, we have a lot of helicopters that come through our area. We're right near an airport. Well, two big airports. The other one that I wanted to really show you and touch on today was called Notion. It's kind of helps me organize. So here's a whole bunch of my projects. From ideas, things that are ideas, all the way to things that I've published. As a matter of fact, I need to take exposure, which I don't know where it is right now. So, but I don't have to know where it is. All I have to do is type in EX exposure. And I can change this from filmed to published. And so you'll see here, I have a couple of different descriptions for what the video could be. In this video, we're discussing the basics of 
camera exposure and how it can affect your photos. Learn about aperture, shutter speed, that sort of stuff, right? And then, uh, so that's the brief description. And I've got the script all written out right here. And then I've got possible titles that I wanted for it. I, I obviously went with Exposure 101, Understanding Aperture, Shutter Speed, and ISO. And, uh, and then these are some tags that go in there to help people who are searching for things. And then nice. and all this information gets spit onto my YouTube studio page. So you'll see down here, this is my YouTube page and analytics. I don't have any analytics yet. Let's go back. Details. There we go. All right. Here are the details. And that's my right there. That brief description up there ended up right in here. And all of those tags right there ended up from right down there, ended up in there. And then that script is what I read inside the video. And all of that is contained in this one little piece of software that is free. And we, if, no. if I, I know, right. And you can yeah. organize a lot of your life this way. Uh, I mean, you could really go in crazy with it, but I keep my content tree all kind of built up. And as you can see right here, let me get it off of X and you can see right here. Here's my really large, a lot of these, all right, so a lot of these projects are travel videos that I went to, uh, like I went to the zoo, we went to Walla Walla with my friend uh, uh, Melty, and then we, um, I also have like, you know, little weird ideas about stuff like, uh, I did a lot of filming of the year that Russell Wilson's last year as a Seahawk had a lot mm -hmm. of video from that year. I brought my camera. They let me bring it on uh, to the stadium all the time. I don't know why, but they do. It looks like a <laughs> regular digital SLR camera, so I don't think that they understand, but whatever. <laughs> so I, you know, I take these very nice videos of this. Anyway, graffiti. I, uh, you know, I've done this. In this one, uh, we're talking about the merits of graffiti and how uh, how to help it uh, preserve it because it's ephemeral. Uh, now, see, this is a good example. All right, so I want to show you something. So I'm going to take this, right? And I'm going to highlight it all, copy it. And I'm going to take it over to chat GPT. We're going to start a new chat. Actually, extend. All right. So chat GPT. I'm going to take this. Oh, already did it. And I'm going to say. I'd like to create a. YouTube video based on the following text, colon, paste, all right, and it takes the idea that I had, right, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you would like to do this, let's so start out by outlining blah, 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 but what I didn't ask it was to create a script, so what I'm going to do this is, so I'm even now taking you from Notion, which is what I use to take all of this information and pile, it, uh, pile information in. Now I'm taking you to the place where I'm actually making the information, kind of generating the actual content. So here we go. So now I say, I would like you to write a YouTube script that is sincere and funny with a little bit of snarky 
thrown in for flavor. Period. <laughs> Let's see what it does. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Let's see what Gipt has to say. Gipt? <laughs> yep. GPT. Gipt. Okay, sure. Here's a sample YouTube video that combines sincerity, humor, and a little bit of snark. <laughs> the Merits <laughs> of Graffiti, an unconventional perspective. Intro. Hey there, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about something a bit different. Graffiti. Now, I know what you're thinking. Graffiti is vandalism, right? Well, let's see. Well, not necessarily. In fact, graffiti can be a powerful and meaningful form of self-expression, and it's something that deserves to be appreciated and preserved. Now, I'm not saying that all graffiti is created equal. It's definitely a time, and uh, there's definitely a time and a place for graffiti, and it's important to respect the law and the property of others. But when it's done right, graffiti can be a work of art that tells a story and adds character to a neighborhood. Have you ever walked through a, a city and come across a colorful mural that just brightened your day? That's the power of graffiti. It's a way for artists to share their vision with the world. And it's something that we, uh, that we should celebrate. But there's the th uh, but here's the thing, graffiti is ephemeral. It's not meant to last forever, and that's a part of its charm. So, if you're a fan of graffiti, make sure to document it and share it with others. Whether you're a photographer or a videographer or just someone with a smartphone, there are plenty of ways to capture and share the beauty of graffiti. So, the next time you come across some graffiti. Don't immediately write it off as vandalism. Take a moment to appreciate the art and the message behind it. And if you and if you're feeling adventurous, go on a graffiti tour with an artist or someone who is well versed in graffiti culture. You might just be surprised at what you discover. Thanks. For watching and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more unconventional perspectives on art and culture what do you think smash, smash that like button i know it's crazy right and i i could all right so watch this you want to see this watch this that's pretty impressive that it created it that fast Yes, it did. Right. Light that fast. Watch. All right. Let's do something different here. I mean, the same thing in the same vein. Now, remember, it remembers everything inside this thread so we can build off of that. All right. Okay. Rewrite the same script exactly the same way, but put a call to action at the end and make it about the channel e -kello photo. Oh, and also finish the entire script with the phrase open quote love the camera you're with close quote. See, that it isn't like I'm not doing any work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm crafting what I want it to build and now it's building exactly the same way that it did it before, right? Except at the very end of this, it's going to modify it. And it also even said up there, hello, welcome to the Kello Photo channel. <laughs> it's a little cheesy, but, you know, needs a little bit of editing, but that's not mm -hmm. And if you are interested in seeing an unconventional in conclusion, so don't forget, take it, appreciate, blah, blah, blah. You might be a love the camera you're with. Ikello photo. Love the camera you're with, Ikello photo. You know, it kind of didn't get it, but it did. Mm -hmm. And I take that and I edit it and massage it down, right? To something that is 
you know, easily digestible by most people. All right. And that, Travis, is my, is kind of my pipeline, the way that I create videos. That's awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I wanted to show him this, and I might as well have shown you this, the same thing. And I'm glad I have StreamYard so that I can give do this, do this really easily. I mean, you could tell I have StreamYard because it's got the big old logo up there. But it's really important that I get other people excited about content creation because that could be their life. They could do that thing. And I think that Travis can do it, too. He can definitely help me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ikello Herod. And as you can see, I sometimes work with artificial intelligence, but only to the benefit of me and you. I love all of you and uh, love the camera that you're with, baby. <laughs>